Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday morning worship service. This week we look at the, the theme of knowing the Lord. Knowing that the Lord is indeed the God of heaven and earth. Sometimes it is difficult to remember that when we look at all the troubles in this world. We'll see how God dealt with his people, Israel, when they were going through troubles of being taken from their homeland. And yet, we're trying to hang on to that truth that the Lord is their God. We worship today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Give ear, O Lord, to the prayers of your people, and listen to their cry for mercy. You, O Lord, are a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Lord of mercy, we confess that, that with us there, there is, is an abundance of sin, sin but, but in, in you, you there is the fulfillment of, right of righteousness and an abundance of mercy. mercy. We, are we are poor sinners, sinners whose thoughts, thoughts words, words, and deeds betray our, our weakness and death. And death. You, O oh Lord, are gracious and merciful, and, merciful, and through Jesus Christ our Lord, you have saved us by his blood. blood. Give to us true repentance, that, that we know your forgiveness, forgiveness and the and comfort, comfort of a clear conscience. conscience. Give us also hearts made new by your grace, grace that we, we love you above all things, and our neighbors as ourselves, and by your Holy Spirit, do what is pleasing in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. Therefore, through the mercy of God in Christ Jesus our Savior, you have been made children of God in baptism and live because of his mercy. As a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May he who began this good work with you, within you, bring it to completion on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Peace be with you. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O steadfast Lord, you are the great I am, whose promises never fail us, and in whom alone salvation is to be found. Grant to us hearts to trust in your mercy and courage in the face of doubt and fear, that we not surrender hope to darkness and faith to unbelief. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today's lesson comes to us from Romans chapter 8. The sufferings of this present age are not worth comparing to the glory waiting to be revealed. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning, as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they, al who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. This is the word of the Lord. 
the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew in the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered because while you are pulling up the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned, then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. Then he left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, explain to us this parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, the one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed stands for the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The son of man will send out his, his angels, and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them into a blazing furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of the Father. Whoever has ears, let him hear. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Our sermon lesson for today is from Isaiah chapter 44, verses 6 through 8. This is what the Lord says, Israel's King and Redeemer, the Lord Almighty. I am the first and I am the last. Apart from me there is no God. Who then is like me? Let him proclaim it. Let him declare and lay out before me what has happened since I established my ancient people and what is yet to come. Yes, let them foretell what will come. Do not tremble, do not be afraid. Did I not proclaim this and foretell it long ago? You are my witnesses. Is there any God besides me? No, there is no other rock. I know not one. This is the word of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Dear friends, a few years ago there was a series of television commercials, I believe for a Visa check cashing card, and they did this with celebrities, well-known people. They would, they would walk into the store, everyone would recognize them. The people shopping, the cashier, immediately knew who this person was. They'd pick up their, their grocery items and then they'd go to the cashier, and the cashier would say, well, I need identification, please. This idea of needing identification, even when we know who someone is, is kind of what is happening in our lesson today. In Isaiah, God's people are looking for answers. They are looking for answers to a question that, that they've asked and they, they know they've heard the answer before. But yet... They have moments of doubt, moments of uncertainty. Many people look at God in the same way today. They, they know God, sort of. They've heard of him. They know his claims. And they may say they even know him well, but there's still a part of their heart that cries out, are you sure? 
is God real? Is this God of the scripture truly the one true God that he claims to be? As I said, the children of Israel were in this situation where many of them were having such thoughts, such doubts, such concerns. The Assyrian kingdom had come in and taken away the northern kingdom of, of Israel and it was gone, never to return. God had said to the southern kingdom, the few remaining people, that the nation of Babylon was coming in. I was going to take them captive, take them away, destroy their temple. To the people of God who trusted in God as the Lord Almighty, the Lord of power, it, it seemed almost unthinkable to them, unimaginable, that God, if he were truly God, would allow this to happen. How could God allow his temple, his people, to be taken away? Had they been wrong all this time? Could there be a better God to follow? How could they be sure? In the midst of all of the judgment and law that God speaks in the Old Testament, he regularly gives his people a word of hope, a word of gospel. We have that hope in this lesson today. God is still God. His people are still his people. Their sin was bringing upon them just punishment. But that did not mean that God had abandoned them. That did not mean that God was ignoring them. He says to them, This is what the Lord says, Israel's King and Redeemer, the Lord Almighty. I am the first and I am the last. Apart from me, there is no God. Apart from God, there is no God. You would think the children of Israel would have, have no problem keeping that straight in their hearts and in their thoughts and in their actions. But then again, think about ourselves. When everything around us is falling apart, when everything around us is trying to tell us one thing, it's often difficult to believe something else. It's difficult for people today to say that, you know, God is in control as a virus ravages the world. Is it easy for us to say that God is the true God, the powerful God, the God who is watching out for us as, as churches are burned and people face persecution for their faith? It's happening. Is God the real God? Is God the powerful God? Is he the one that we need to be looking to? Or should we focus on material things? Things that we can touch and feel and see. Things that will help us in this life. Should we rely upon selfishness or self-centeredness? In other words, look to ourselves first. Look to ourselves to solve problems. Look to ourselves to find answers. Look for our, to ourselves for protection in this time of unrest. You see, God says the same thing to his people. He issues a challenge to any of the gods that they would try to hold up before him and say, well, but look at this. And he does that for us too. He is our king. He is the one who is our ruler. He is the one who is control and is in control and who governs us. He is our Lord Almighty, he says. The one God who is more powerful, more faithful, more true than anything or anyone. God is the Lord Almighty. God of power. And he says he is our redeemer. What love to be our redeemer. 
what love God shows when he says he is our redeemer. For in love, he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to take our sin upon himself, to pay for that sin with his blood, to die on the cross for us, to be our redeemer, to be the one who through his sacrifice bought us back and brought us into the family of God again. He has made us his own. He has made us his family. He is our redeemer. Remember that. Live it. Believe it. Trust in the power of what Christ has done. He is truly who he claims to be. He is the King, the Lord Almighty, and the Redeemer. And so God says, a challenge. If any of the things that you would hold up before me as more powerful or more beneficial, if any of those things were there at the beginning, if any of those things truly has power, let them show it. There was a man who challenged a pastor one time when the pastor was talking about the book of Genesis in regard to the creation story. The pastor proclaimed that everything indeed had been created by God in that week of creation, as the scripture says. The man responded, well, how do you know? Were you there? Imagine the look of shock on the man's face when the pastor replied, well, yes, I was there. You were? Well, yes, I was there. I was there when God created the world in six days, when God parted the Red Sea and led Moses and the people through that sea and, and destroyed the Egyptians who were following after them, chasing. It was there when Jonah was, was caught by that great fish and then released on the land was there when, when God made the sun stand still so his people could win the victory. When God, he was to be there when, when Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. To be there when Christ turned water into wine. To be there when Christ took our sin to the cross and see him die. And to be there on Easter morning when we see the empty tomb with the apostles and we see a risen and living Christ. Well, now the man was completely befuddled and he said to the pastor, well, how can you have been there? The pastor picked up his Bible and said, in this word of God, in the word of God, we hear all these things. In the word of God, we are told the truth. In the word of God, and therefore with eyes of faith, we see these things as if we were truly there. We have this need to be sure of things, to be certain of things. But we have from our God the sure and certain knowledge that he is who he claims to be. Even when our eyes are tempted to believe what we're seeing in front of us, to believe something else that's quite different, he says he is our rock. He said in his word, do not tremble, do not be afraid. Did I not proclaim this and foretell it long ago? You are my witnesses. Is there any God besides me? No, there is no other rock. I know not one. Our Lord Jesus Christ and his words are so strong and so true. He says he is the rock, the foundation on which we stand. From a top of, of a rock, of a mountain, Mount Sinai, God himself descended upon that mountain and gave Moses his law and commands. Out of a rock, as the people traveled, 
God gave them water, signifying to them the presence of Jesus among them. And when all people were unable to obey God from that rock of Calvary, that hill of Calvary, our Lord Jesus was crucified for us, paid the price of death for sin, the price that God demanded. And from that rock, the tomb where he lay, he burst forth in life as he is risen from the dead. Our powerful Lord Almighty, our God, our Redeemer, he burst forth from that grave that we may have life again. What idol could do that, God says. Who else can do these things that he has done? Who else knows and has been there since the very beginning? He quenches our spiritual thirst. He gives us something strong to stand upon. He shows us power of life as he rises from the dead. That is our rock. That is our salvation. Hold fast to that rock. Hold fast to that salvation. Our trust in the one true God, it continues to grow. Continues to grow as we hear words like these today. It helps us see what the things of this world really are. They're just things. Makes us think of the first commandment. You shall have no other gods before me. What does this mean, Luther said? We should fear and love and trust in God above all things. Above everything around us. Above all the messages that we may be receiving about who's in control and who God is and who God isn't. God says, trust in him above all those things. Trust in the word that he has given to you in the scripture. In grace, God gives us faith. He gives us faith to cling to that rock of salvation. He gives us faith to build our lives on that solid rock of faith in Christ, our Lord Jesus, our Redeemer, our King. There is no God besides him. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We join in confessing our Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We, we believe, believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord, you have been the refuge and strength of your people from generation to generation. Give to us the comfort of your presence in time of trouble, your grace to forgive our sins, and your peace to govern our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, your power holds all things together in heaven and on earth. Give wisdom to those who lead our nation and guidance to those who make, administer, and judge our laws, so that life be protected and justice administered. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, your church lives by your grace, by the grace you bestow through word and sacrament. Bless the pastors who preach to us this gospel and the church workers who serve us in your name. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, your mercy extends to all our needs and your grace gives healing according to your will. Hear us on behalf of all who stand in need. Grant to them grace sufficient for all their needs and sustain them in the hour of trial. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you give us new lives in baptismal water, and your spirit opens our hearts to faith. Help us to live out fully our vocation as your children in the places where we live and work and do the good works that you desire. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you have granted us a place at the table of your son. Help us to receive his body and blood with repentance and faith and to keep in holy lives the precious gift we will receive upon our lips. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you have given us the encouragement of the mighty saints of old and those who taught us the faith. Help us to leave a legacy of faithfulness to those who follow us and sustain us in hope until we join the saints in Christ's eternal presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We join in the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your, your will be done, done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive, forgive us our sins, as we forgive, forgive those who sin against, against, against us. Lead, Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being here with us this morning for worship. We pray that this word of God touches your heart and strengthens your faith as you look to the, as you look to the one true God, the Lord of heaven and earth, your King, your Redeemer. God be with you. And also with you.